welcome to the Palladium for stop number two on the Coast to Coast Baddest Tour. Two of the biggest names in terms of icons in combat sports history with some unfinished business as we continue to set the stage for Saturday, June 1st from the Kia Forum in Los Angeles and live on Fanmio pay-per-view, it is Nate Diaz versus Jorge Masvidal. Part two, last man standing. In a city so nice, we had to name it twice. How about a fight that was so good, but abruptly stopped the first time back in 2019. This time we're gonna do it again in the boxing ring as they look to settle their rivalry in a 10 round light heavyweight pro bout. The pay-per-view can be purchased right now going to fanmio.com slash PPV and thousands have already joined the pre-sale list to be there for this highly anticipated showdown in person. You can sign up for the pre-sale right now at fanmio.com slash fight. And finally, tickets will go on sale to the general public this Thursday, April 18th. 10 a.m. Pacific time through Ticketmaster. And I wanted to shout out the man responsible for putting this together, the CEO of Fanmio, Solomon Engel. Yeah. As he's brought together two guys with more street cred than just about everybody in here combined. Okay, just about. I don't want to shout out anybody negatively out there, all right? But before we hear from these two main eventers, a couple fights have already been announced for this card. Going to be a six-round lightweight bout matching Sean Garcia, the younger brother of 140-pound superstar Ryan Garcia, against Amato Vargas, the unbeaten son of former world champion Fernando Vargas. And the announced co-feature comes Saturday, June 1st. How about former UFC lightweight champion Anthony Showtime Pettis? Taking on the gentleman on my far right, representing the Diaz camp in Stockton, California, riding a five-fight boxing win streak after a decorated MMA career, Chris Avila. Hey, Chris. Wanted to ask you first to be taking on a, an iconic name in Showtime Pettis, but your transition from MMA to boxing after your last MMA fight in 2021, five straight victories. What does this fight mean to your boxing career here, June 1st against Anthony Pettis? It means a lot. Uh, I'm just building my resume right now, and I'm, uh, I'm ready to represent my team and represent my city and do what I got to do and get my hand raised. Chris, speaking of that team, when, you, when you're representing the Nick Diaz Army, there's a reputation, there's a swagger that you've acquired here. What is it like sparring, putting in the work next to an icon like Nate Diaz? It's cool, you know, uh, we're from the same city, Stockton. Uh, nah, it's cool. <laughs> Thank you, Chris Avila. We certainly want to recognize the trainers and team members who will be here with both fighters as we get closer to this fight. From Team Masvidal, a veteran Las Vegas boxing trainer who has worked with the likes of Tyson Fury and so much more, Jorge Capatillo. And next to him, the striking coach at the world famous ATT MMA gym in South Florida. He's been representing Jorge Masvidal for a very long time, Paulino Hernandez. Gentlemen, I want to start with you, Jorge Capetillo. Jorge Masvidal comes calling, looking to make this transition to boxing. So far, what have you liked about working with him that lets you know he can make this transition to go 10 rounds come June 1st? Well, first and foremost, I want to thank God for giving us the opportunity to be in this position. Amen. And, uh, Don't be rude when older men are talking to you. Show and, some uh, respect to your elders. Just... It's, it's great to, to have a, a, a BMF champion, a UFC champion, uh, a warrior like Jorge Mas, Masvidal, you know, to have him in the gym, 
with with his uh, work ethic, with his discipline, and his passion of boxing. Man, that's one of the things that they give me the push to to work with him. You know what I'm saying? And uh, we we all know what this man is capable to do in the octagon. And now it's gonna be time to see this man was gonna be capable to do in perform and do first in boxing. Thank you, Jorge. And Paulino, I see that BMF strap around your shoulder that Jorge Masvidal captured back in 2019 in the first fight. How about this transition? It doesn't, it's not overnight for every mixed martial artist to transition to boxing with the footwork, with the striking and everything else. How quickly has Jorge been able to jump into this? Bueno, primeramente, muchas gracias por la oportunidad. Eh, creo que el español, eh, creo que Jorge Masvidal no es primera vez que hace una pelea de boxeo. Creo que ya tiene una pelea de boxeo y ya la ganó. Se tiene la experiencia que ya pasó con pelear en boxeo. Amén. I can't pretend to give a translation, man. People are bored of hearing me talk already. Well, uh, this is not the first time that Jorge is stepping in the ring. He already has one fight. He won the fight. And and so he's not, he's, he's not an ex ex extreme sport for him. And he's doing a great transition from MMA to boxing. There you have a team with Masvidal, of course. In the corner of Nate Diaz, a veteran of Northern California Pro Boxing Gym for many decades, working with multiple title challengers, Richard Perez. And coach, the two of you were just making Nate's professional boxing debut last summer against Jake Paul, went 10 hard rounds. What type of adjustments, improvements are you working on to prepare for Jorge Masvidal? We're always prepared. Yeah, we're always prepared. Yeah. Nate, Nate doesn't mess around. Because there's times that, you know, he might you know, get hurt, but he keeps coming. He works hard. He's dedicated. You'll see him in the fight. Thank you, Coach Perez. Now to start with the main eventers. Representing Miami. Started. On YouTube in the backyards with the legend himself, Kimbo Slice. Went on to claim superstardom in 2019 by becoming the consensus MMA fighter of the year, delivering the quickest knockout in UFC history when he dang near beheaded Ben Askren. And you want action? How about a three time UFC fight of the night honoree, a four time performance of the night winner? How are you in my fight? Represent! Better than your bitch ass, dude. Uh, hey, where's that fool at? Bring that fool over here. He's been popping off like that. Where your bitch ass at, man? You scared ass motherfucker. Shut your ass up right now. Stop cutting off this guy while he's talking, man. I'm gonna have somebody go slap your ass, bro. Let this man, let this man do his job. At least be funny if you're gonna heckle, man. And as referenced, of course, by his coaching staff, 1-0 as a pro boxer, dating back to 2005 when you made your pro debut, Jorge Masvidal. Jorge, last April, you walked away from MMA. You retired. Your promotion, Game Bread Promotions, Game Bread Bare Knuckle MMA has taken off. But the phone call did come in to get you out of the bullpen to get back up in there and, and get back into the fight game. What is it about this rematch and this fighter across from you, Nate Diaz, that you said, yeah, I'll do that. I'm not done yet. The money had something to do with it, of course, but um, I thank God that uh, I'm blessed. I don't, I don't have to continue to compete for the money. You know, when the opportunity got shown and, uh, and I got some of the opponents on the list, I definitely got excited, man. It's more for legacy at this point than anything else, you know? Nate was one of the names on the list, and they and they said that they were uh, pretty sure that they could make that fight happen. Obviously, the 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 small speculation that the fight, you know, got stopped early. Whatever, let's fucking find out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Makes him makes him a lot of cool shit in his career, and I feel that he's one of the better fighters that come through in the UFC. And he also has, well, that's your opinion. Uh, I got mine right. Um, nah, never motherfucker. 
Never, motherfucker. Um, so I'm just gonna get him to do my job, man, and fucking get my hand raised and take his ass out, you know? He knows that. It's not the person on this side, but I signed up the fight, man. I didn't sign up the high five where nobody take pictures of none of the motherfuckers in this game. I've only signed up for one thing, to be as brutal as I can to set myself apart from the next man and bring a fat-ass paycheck to my home and my family. So, fuck everybody in this bitch. Of course, across from Jorge Masvidal, come Saturday, June 1st. You just have to say it, right? The 209, Stockton, California. A man who was not motherfucking surprised at all when he stopped Conor McGregor in the first of two pay-per-view blockbusters in 2016 that made him a household name in combat sports circles and beyond. As we mentioned, made his first pro boxing debut, went 10 hard rounds with Jake Paul last summer, and has never been a stranger to the sweet science, having trained with so many world champions and sparring, the likes of Andre Ward and many more. Nate Diaz. Nate, it's a simple question. You two fought five years ago in MMA. This rematch, though, in boxing. Why boxing and not MMA to do it for chapter two of this rivalry? This is part one, because we're boxing. Uh, when we find MMA, it'll be part two. So uh, that's what we're working on right now, coming out here to whoop that ass in um, the boxing. We know the history between you, UFC 244, 2019, I don't know, 10 blocks away down the road at the world's most famous arena, Madison Square Garden. The inaugural BMF title on the line. We learned a few things through three rounds, but a cut abruptly stopped the fight upon doctor's advice. Nate, the competitor in you, how difficult was that to be pulled from the fight and how much has that motivated you throughout these five years to, to put yourself back into this position to get a second chance at Mosby Yeah, I knew I'd be here the whole time, so I knew the time would come. Uh, I just got back to it and did what I had to do as soon as I could, and uh, I still feel I'm the, I'm the fucking BMF in this whole bitch, the whole fight. Now. I'm gonna continue on until the end of time, that's my plan. Happy birthday! Jorge, back to you five years ago on that November night. Dwayne The Rock Johnson putting the title around your waist. When you look back on that fight, what went down? What are your memories? I swear. Yeah. I'm fast, I'm explosive. Um, I kick well. They say I got a, a record for kneeing people in the face, so, you know, I'm going to fucking use it if it's MMA. Now it's boxing, so. But you don't have to worry about those things, but I also got these hands, you know, that are explosive as fuck, so. He's getting the whole buffet, man. Initially, after your victory, you said, look, we will run this back. Was there ever a doubt in your mind that, that the chapter two wouldn't happen in some form, whether it's boxing, whether it's bare knuckle? I mean, heck, if you guys filled out Times Square, I'm sure it'd draw a crowd for if you want to do a trilogy after this fight. But did you always know you'd be back here a second time against this icon across from you? I didn't 100% uh, believe that when uh, when he became a free agent, and then that's the only time I was like, yeah, maybe the the rematch won't happen, you know, because I'm still signed to the UFC, so it's not like I just get up and leave, you know. Luckily, I got this deal that allowed me to fight three boxing matches, and uh, he's the first one. There you go. There you go. Uh, if I'm being honest here, Jorge, uh, there was a lot of respect between you the first time around. Something has changed. What what specifically has changed? You know, I still respect him as a, as a human being, as a person. I don't know what his training regimen is like, but I know how he's made his money in the sport, much like how I've made my money, getting up early, working out, and, and we come from similar backgrounds. So I definitely got respect for him as, as a human being, as a competitor. But when it comes to fighting, I'm trying to fucking end motherfuckers, and I'm trying to end his ass, just like the next man. You know? So there's no, there's no bad blood on my side. I know he wasn't happy with the results, and he said some things he didn't say well with me, like calling me a coward and a quitter, which I've never quit in a fucking fight. Tell me the one time I've quit, cocksucker over there. Get the fuck out of here. The funny guy. Get the fuck out of here, bro. I ain't never in my life quit. I ain't never in my life tap. Ask other motherfuckers that got 50 fights that did tap. Never tapped in my life. All right, yeah, I've gone to sleep, but because I didn't choose to tap, cocksucker. These motherfuckers, man. These motherfuckers be getting slick out here, man. He catch me outside, man, in big fucking mouths. Pussy ass motherfuckers. 
Dade County, Miami. Nate, on the flip side, does it matter to you? Do you respect oh, totally. him as a man, as a fighter, after sharing three rounds of action with him in the UFC cage? Yeah, I respect everybody who fights uh, in the cage or at all, and uh, that ain't got nothing to do with it. Though. We got a fight to do, and uh, we got to figure this all out. Figure it out, we will. Thank you, brother. If there's a fight before the fight, sometimes it can happen at the negotiation table when the details get worked out, when we figure out who's the A side and the B side. Nate, was this an easy negotiation to get to this point, to get this fight on paper ahead of June 1st? Yeah, like... <laughs> did, did you get what you asked for? Yeah, I didn't ask for anything. <laughs> Jorge says he didn't ask for anything, but if I've been following your interviews in recent days closely, you seem to have a different tune calling Nate a diva in the build-up well, to this fight. Well, if it wasn't him, it was his manager, because, you know, we were talking to his manager, and they're like, well, if it ain't like this, he's not fighting. So I, I just, I don't get it. If it's negotiation tactics, or it's like you don't want to scrap over a fucking whose name goes on top, when usually the winner gets to decide a lot of these things, you know, the guy that won the last fight gets to decide if they're walking out first or last, you know. So, shit, I mean, it's there on paper, you know. There's a reason why it's been not the way it is. I won the last fight. Why wouldn't my name be first, you know? But I don't really give a fuck because at the end of the day, all I don't want to do is fight and motherfuckers will be able to tell that. I'm just a fighter. I'm just a dog, man. I just want to fight. This is how I make my money, you know? I love you too, man. Nate, it is a curious question. He technically was the victor the first time around but your name's on the A side of this promotion. Are you the bigger star? <laughs> well, I, well, I didn't, I didn't ask for any of this. It's just it's happening. So, who's the A side? <laughs> if I had a rematch uh, recommendation, it would be for uh, MMA fight. <laughs> Hundred percent in trilogy can be in MMA any day. Uh -huh. I'm actually signed to a UFC company that does MMA. You better ask. I do. You're right. I'm not a free agent. But what? You rather fight in another promotion that's not the UFC? Like, what the fuck? Made five years ago, at least for. Pay us, uh, Mr. Doesn't matter. If you were the baddest you motherfucker, us, you'd do what you want. That sounds awesome and shit, bro. I'm not gonna catch a lawsuit just because I wanna fucking go and fight inside of a KFC parking lot, you know? Nate, are any of his accusations true? You wouldn't fight in certain cities, it had to be your way? <laughs> Somebody must have knew what they were doing and told them to do what the fuck they need to do. I didn't ask no questions. Well, the good news is we have a fight Saturday, June 1st. If we learned anything the first time, Nate, he had the edge over three rounds in MMA. Why will you have the edge over Jorge Masvidal in boxing? Uh, any combat sport for, against any fighter, all of them motherfuckers. <laughs> Jorge, the same question can go back to you. You referenced you did use kicks, knees. You used your full mixed martial arts arsenal the first time around. In this rematch, how do you stack up against Nate Diaz from a boxing standpoint? One, the main thing that counts is I'm a bigger dog. I don't give a fuck who's in front of me. I got more heart, I'm more dog, I'm gonna go through more pain, more fatigue than any of these motherfuckers. And in particular in boxing, I got more hand speed. I got more hand speed, I got better head movement, and I'm more explosive, and I think that's what it's gonna come down to, my speed and power. Nate, is it your birthday today, as the fans would be? Uh... Happy birthday to you. Thank you. Love. Thank you.
We mentioned Nate's pro boxing debut last summer against Jake Paul. Lost the unanimous decision. Fuck Jake Paul. Jorge. Fuck Jake Paul. Jake Paul, not the most popular name in this building. Wait, hey, one hey, be nice, to be nice Biden. to Jake Paul. Fuck Joe Biden. Joe Biden. <laughs> so Jorge. Hey, drink some me, man. I love all of you, man. Drink some. Hey, send it. What are we doing? Whiskey? Send him the fucking whiskey. When you look back, last August, the 10 rounds that Nate put in against Jake Paul in his pro boxing debut, what'd you learn? about him as a boxer in that fight? Nah, I, you know, I I honestly in my heart don't, from looking at Nate, you know, um, it didn't look like he, he took the Jake Paul the most serious, you know? And I mean, who would, right? This kid was just swallowing bananas on like Vine videos a couple years ago. So it, it's not like I blame him, you know? It's not like I blame him for, for not being in the best shape of his life for Jake. But, um, you know? I'm a different type of cat, and he knows that first-hand experience, so I hope he's just prepared for what me and him got to do. I don't really give a fuck what happened to the Jake Paul fight, because I, I know Nate is a warrior, and he could fucking take a beating and give one. And that's, uh, that's fucking rock and roll. Nate, we've heard this echoed a few times. Friday's first stop in the tour right now. The idea that Jorge believes you didn't take Jake Paul seriously. You weren't in tip-top shape. How do you respond to that? <laughs> Yeah, t I take every fight serious. Uh, I started camp a little early, the long camp, and uh, I'm f I'm fucking burned out on giving a fuck. And so when I got a little closer, it's like whatever. But regardless, every fight serious. Mate, what do you need to work on from that first performance as you continue this transition into pro boxing? Probably stop training. <laughs> All together. Coach Perez, slide that question back over to you. Put in 10 hard rounds. Is there anything you liked, you didn't like about that first performance? Well, <clears throat> we're working on this one right now. This is what we're, we're, we want to do. We want to work, and he's working really good. And uh, one thing about Nathan, he can throw. When, when, he's, when he's training good, he can throw. I mean, you can see it. You know, he threw the most punches in the UFC twice. Broke the record, so. That says it all. Sure, for sure. Jorge, you would know this better than anybody. How would you describe the power from Nate Diaz? Look like she felt it. Ask her. <laughs> I don't know. He's not. He's not the hardest hitter. I didn't hit. Felt. You know. He's got like. A, you know. Like I said, he's not the hardest hitter I, I don't face. You know. He's got good endurance. He keeps throwing him, but he's not the hardest hitter I face. So I wouldn't rank his power too high. Nate, right back at you. Do you respect the power coming out of Jorge Masvidal? Yeah, I respect the power. Uh, uh, any pun anybody who doesn't get in their fight, I don't want nobody hitting me. So uh, <laughs> my plan is to hit and don't get hit and hit a lot like a motherfucker. So that's the plan. I come to, I'm coming to win. And uh, that's what this whole shit's all about. Nate, you know rivalries at times can, can define a fighter's career because of how big these fights can be, how, how much they can tell the story of a certain era. Is, is any elements of your reputation on the line, meaning you must get this win back from Jorge and this rivalry? Yeah, that's what that's what I want to do. I want to I, I want to uh, win every fight, and uh, if I if I lose for some reason, I plan on winning the fight back, no matter what. So that's what I'm here for. Five years have gone by, of course, since the first time you guys met. Do you think anyone between you and Jorge has developed an edge in terms of how you've aged or, or, or the fights you've had in between? Have you been following his career closely since your last meeting? Yeah, I watch all the fights, and uh, you can't do nothing but get better with time or quit, so he don't look like he's been quitting. It looks like it's time. What about you, Jorge? Do you expect a more dangerous Nate than the last time? Do you think the rules changes 
will bring out an advantage for him at all in this boxing match? Hell no. Hell no. No. Not like an advantage, but I've always felt he had some of the better hands in the UFC now with boxing, so I definitely feel that uh, that'll play in him. I feel he's not a good kicker at all, giving him or taking him. So that was definitely an advantage that I had in the UFC, but now it's boxing. I still feel I got the better hands, though, so let's go. I can't hear the hecklers, man. I can't hear them. Y'all gotta speak up. Y'all gotta learn the heckle better, man. This is New York. Y'all supposed to be good at this shit, man. Uh, 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 I can't hear you, broke motherfuckers. Jorge, a little bit of a neat crowd here in New York City. I love it. I like, I like the hostile crowds. I like the, I'm hoping LA is rowdy. Because I like the hostile crowds, man. I've always gone to hostile places and done my thing. My, my home has always been on the road. I've only fought Miami once or twice. So I really give a fuck if the crowd is with me or not. Because I know God's with me. So I give a fuck. Man. So, you know, feel me? That's why I ain't got no fear for no man. Because God be with me. And God, yeah, in your book, cocksucker. We're going to take some questions from the media in attendance tonight. You can identify yourself. Question, the BMF title was on the line last Saturday. We saw Holloway knock out Gaethje. Dana White said that that was the biggest holy shit moment in UFC. Do you both agree that that was the biggest holy shit moment in UFC? He asked if uh, the Max Holloway knockout was the greatest oh shit moment, like Dana White said, in UFC history. You never show up, bro. I'm going to make time, bro. What, you want to get some work? I thought, that, that I thought the knockout was great. I thought you give me work. <laughs> hey, where'd you get this guy from, man? Go ahead, Nate. What did you say? I said I thought the, 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 the uh, knockout was great. I thought the knockout was great. I thought the knockout was Aquí no vine a boxear, aquí yo vine a hacer conferencia, mi hermano. Jorge, do you believe that the Holloway knockout of Gaethje was the biggest holy shit moment in the UFC? Currently at the time, yeah, man. That Max Holloway knockout was one of the most spectacular things I've seen in my life. Max, when you're losing that fight, is one of the greatest fighters in my book ever. And just for him to have 10 seconds on the clock left and gamble it up and be like, all right, let's go. Let's fucking throw everything to the side. I'm up four rounds on your ass, and I'm going to just gamble it up right here in these 10 seconds and then walk away with the buzzer beater. Like, he literally knocked him out with zero seconds left on the clock. When they were showing the replay, it was showing zero, you know? So I fucking, I love it, man. That's what fighting is. That's what fighting for the BMF belt is. I fucking, I love it, man. Great fucking fight. One of the greatest moments. And I was there live for it. And it was fucking, it shocked my soul, man. It was a fucking great moment to be a part of. And lastly, I think it's fair to say that nobody here is going to pay to see you guys have a technical boxing match on nope. June 1st. So Damn, can you both man. commit to a toe-to-toe -to -toe war, something like the Holloway Gaethje last 10 seconds? Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Nate? You got a thumbs up for Nate, Jorge. What's your response? Shit, my track record proves my response. I fucking throw down every time I walk in there. I, ain't, I don't know no jiu-jitsu for a reason or no wrestling, you know? I'm here to fucking fight, man, every time. So imagine I just got boxing gloves on. I don't got to worry about nobody taking me down, going for fucking submissions, having to pop back up. All I got to do is fucking throw these hands. Turnbatu with the Ask the Experts. Question for Jorge Masvidal. Jorge, we know your last fight in UFC was about a year ago. You stepped away. You now said that you're going to fight three times in boxing, and you may even go back to the UFC. So I'm just wondering if that time away was maybe a blessing in disguise for you to re-energize and, and come back strong in your career. That was hilarious, bro. That's funny. Everybody please laugh at this loser, bro. <laughs> Yo, get this guy a drink, man, from me. Um, well, Nah, that's not for me, brother. My hands is too fucked up, but I can whoop your ass bare enough if you want. I don't need paychecks. I just said I don't fight for the money, man. I fight because I love it, you know? The guy standing across me is a fucking legend, so that's why I fight, man. Pop sucker. Fuck up, man. Look at these hecklers, these shitty ass. If you, were, if you were like a dude, I'd love to respond back to you, but, you know? And 
Yeah, question for Nate Diaz. Nate, I know you've trained with the legendary Andre Ward. Are you going to be training with uh, Andre for this fight? And what have you learned from him? Yeah, I learned a lot from from him just from being being around and seeing him things how he does and how how he's been doing things over the years. But uh, I probably, probably won't train with him. I think he's retired. He's doing some other things right now. But I'll probably tap in with him if I can. Thank you. Uh, Jose Young's <laughs> MMA fighting. First question for Jorge Masvidal. Um, ever since your Darren Till fight, you know, you've come out red hot and you have these electric, uh, especially the Ben Askren, you finished him early. Those are five round fights. Those are five minute, five minute round fights. This is a three minute round fight. So, is this, that's just a sprint. So, does these three minutes kind of, you know, give you the advantage in the boxing right now? Uh, I mean, yes. I mean, no. You know, because um, it's ten of them, twelve of them. So you do go a little bit longer in the MMA. So at the end of the day, it gets chopped up into to more amount, but you do get bigger breaks. You know, I've always felt that I, I got speed and power over a lot of guys. It doesn't matter if there's breaks or not. I'm still gonna have that speed and power. So fucking whether it be boxing or MMA, I don't give a fuck. Quinn's for Nate Diaz. Well, mate, Especially at the, near the end of your. Yeah! Punch for Nate. Hey, watch out. Thank you, though. Especially at the end of your UFC career, you've had these electric finishes to the to your fights. You know, the Leon Edwards pointing him and rocking him. Uh, you even got Jake Paul in that guillotine at the end of that fight. Can we expect anything in the later fights? In your most recent fights, you've had these electric finishes that kind of captivated the audience. You know, you clipped Leon Edwards at the end, you put Jake Paul in the guillotine. Even if you came up short, the fans, you know, they viewed you as the winner. Can we expect anything like that from against Jorge when you do fight June 1st? No, that that was deserved, but uh, I'm here to have a professional boxing match and do things right and uh, show them I know how to uh, box with the rules. <laughs> Eastern in Miami before concluding Friday, Los Angeles, 6.30 p.m. Pacific time. Gentlemen, if we can face off to make stop two of this tour. Yeah, I want to give a shout out to my team, my partner Chris Avila, been sparring with him for about 10 years now. That's the main man, that's the baddest motherfucker right here. The baddest motherfucking coach right here, Richard Perez. You already know what's up. Hey, I brought my OG from back in the day, Richard Madonna, with me here to watch my back to make sure no one fucks with me. So love to the homies and the team. Peace! so much for watching this video and make sure to subscribe for more videos of your favorite fighters over here on Fight Up TV and give us a follow online as well at Fight Up TV on Twitter and on Instagram. We appreciate it guys.